Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, self-proclaimed Silicon Valley marketing genius, Bill Roth. This is the show where we review this week's news in the world of quantum computing, its impact on the world of cybersecurity, AI, and more. And with us this week, as always, stalwart for the show, Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations, and longtime listener, first-time guest, Q Secures, CISO, IT self-proclaimed IT warlord, Mr. Craig Devin, calling in from our World IT headquarters in Maple Grove, Minnesota. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. I love the intro. Perfect. So, this so last week there were a bunch of interesting stories. Uh, what does quantum computing hold for generative AI? We had another story on quantum computing to spark cybersecurity Armageddon. Uh, hyperbole much? Uh, world, and then also talking about the first uh, room temperature stable qubit for quantum computers. Well, let's hear more about how all this shakes out by talking to our experts. So Brandon, first article up, was um, what is that intersection of uh, quantum computing and generative AI? Uh, apparently, people started to write about it. Tell us about it. Yeah, really thought this one was interesting from Unite.ai. Uh, the summary was quantum computing introduces a revolutionary leap in computational power, which could substantially enhance the capacity of generative AI and by enabling the processing and analysis of vast amounts of data at unprecedented speeds, it sets the stage for more sophisticated, nuanced, and realistic generative models. Craig, really happy to have you on the podcast today and wanted to get your take from a, a CISO perspective. So given the potential of quantum computing to dramatically reduce the computational time for certain AI tasks, what proactive measures can CISOs take to prepare their organizations for the shift? That's a good question. Um, I, I take a step back a little bit and say, you know, generative AI is being used every every day. Employees are using it all, all, all the time. I think, you know, with with even more quantum computing that will drive quicker, faster results, you, you're going to see this be an everyday kind of item. It will be part of your work day, whether it's email or Slack or hey, I'm going to go work on generative AI and and how that gets delivered. What does that mean? Right? Is is that hey? That's it. There's inherent risk in that, in that you may be putting corporate sensitive data into these models, right? Into these to, to help generate your end goal. And that, that poses risk for a, a security breach um, to an organization. And, you know, much like conversations like this, I think you, you start with messaging. I think you, you, you address this to your folks and say, hey, we, we know you're going to use this. We want you to do this. We want to work better and faster. But there are some conditions around that. And then you, you kind of start from day one, you know, confidentiality agreements that outline what you can and can't do, where you should be doing this. And every CISO knows this, you backstop that with a policy. Here's the hard, rigid rule. You know, we, you may revisit that, but this is what you can and can't do. And then, you, you know, when you're worried about what data is going where, you should look at access controls, right? So, so who has access to what? What are they doing with that? Have, have you really looked into those? make sure that that data isn't readily accessible to be exfiltrated from your organization, even unintentionally. Um, one little item too is more of some of these generative AI models and it also have like opt outs or incognito mode, right? You know, proof is in the pudding, but, but the ability to put in data and have it scrubbed or sensitized, you know, is something to consider. Um, I'm not sold on it yet, but, but it's yet another option to protect the organization. Excellent. Thanks very much, Craig. Uh, folks, as always, don't forget to subscribe to make sure you're up to date on our most recent uh, information on quantum computing. Go to the Q Secure page on LinkedIn and hit subscribe. Uh, next up uh, is a quantum computing to spark cybersecurity Armageddon, IBM says. Well, this was the company who in the 90s said object databases were gonna take over the world. So Brandon, color me slightly skeptical. Uh, let's talk about what IBM is uh, chirping about. 
IBM has issued a stark warning about the potential cybersecurity implications of quantum computing, and they're suggesting that a tremendous processing power of a quantum computer might pose a significant threat to uh, current encryption methods, heralding a potentially catastrophic scenario for cybersecurity. Craig, I uh, imagine you know a thing or two about this one. Uh, thanks. I, yes, I, you know, I, I think it, it's, it's that dichotomy of quantum computing where the the transformative capabilities of that to change our society as a whole is, is attractive, amazing, um, and, and a, an accelerator. But with that is also you know the threatening component, the, the risk of this, and and I, I think it's both, right? With with all these things, I think you have to take it a, a, as such. Um, I look at old attack vectors, the brute force denial of service. If, if you gave something, those attacks with, with more horsepower, like with a quantum computing, how disruptive could that be? Um, and, you know, that, that just gives me, me pause. In if, if and when that's in the wrong hands, how are we going to mitigate that? Um, you look at Shor's algorithm, and we've talked on this podcast specifically, too, about steel now, decrypt later, harvest now, decrypt later. Yes, that, that is certainly a component of it. But I think one of the things that I'm really looking at and tying back to some of our AI discussion is these large language models where if you could break that encryption and break communication, what if you could seed data or you seed these platforms where, where these decisioning components are made of with, with you know, garbage in, garbage out. You're putting in, tainting the pool of information to steer decisioning, steer um, you know, direction. So you could business sabotage, espionage, um, you know, critical mistakes. I think that's a real risk. Excellent. Thanks very much, Craig. Uh, and then another article, Brandon, that came up, which smells a little like Fleischmann and Pons. Remember our Cold Fusion guys back in the 80s and 90s? That's how old I am. Uh, the, you dated, yeah. Exactly. Kind of dates one. me, huh? The um, world first, the world first out of a stable qubit at room temperature? Brandon, tell us more. I'm not sure what to think here. Yeah, it's game-changing development for quantum computing. Uh, IFL Science has announced that uh, scientists have created a stable qubit at room temperature. So this achievement overcomes a significant hurdle in the field and could escalate the development and deployment of quantum computers. Uh, Craig, how does this development contribute to the scaling of quantum computers and their incorporations into data, data centers and other modern IT infrastructure? I, I take a step back a little bit with, with Brett, that brand. When I first go, is it room temperature in Minneapolis in November, <laughs> January time frame, or is it room temperature in San Diego? This is key. Uh, this is know, very key. Yeah, this, this, this is key. No, listen, before I got to QSecure, I, you know, what I knew about quantum computing, quantum was 20 points in Scrabble. I knew that, you know, 60 if you get triple word score. And, you know, you know but once you start following this and you look at it, it has been an influx of articles like this. There is a tipping point. If you're following with any sort of regularity, you're seeing advances with, with you know, lower qubits, smarter math. And really what I think, you know, back to AI again, I think you're gonna see that accelerate some of these process and thoughts of how quantum computing can become more, quickly become quantum supremacy in place. And once that happens, I truly feel like the big companies are, will already be investing in them. But then you've got cloud service providers that will, look to incorporate that as part of their offerings. And back to our earlier discussion, that's the a bit of a threatening, uh, but also transformative part of quantum computing. But but I, I really do see this accelerating quicker and faster. Um, it's a little scary going fast, but but it's also, um, I, I think it is, it's the future. And if you embrace it now, um, you'll be in a better spot later. Excellent. All right. <clears throat> so, just a reminder, you can find the links for all the articles mentioned today in the show notes. And if you want weekly quantum updates, join our mailing list by visiting the LinkedIn page. That's all for today's show. I'm your host, Bill Roth, humble, self-proclaimed Silicon Valley marketing genius. And with us this week has been Brandon Dennis and special guest Craig Devin, QSecure CISO and IT warlord. So for Craig... Brandon, Trina behind the scenes, and all the folks at QSecure, we'll see you next week on Last Week in Quantum.